I listened to James Corbett uh, do, do a couple uh, things talking about how uh, this uh, the BRICS nations, the anti-hegemon, are actually just part of another Hegelian dialectic run by the Rockefellers and Rothschilds. And, uh, you know, he cites a lot of, uh, you know, historical data with Mao being involved with Yale and uh, Rockefellers and, you know, knowing all these families and and, and all that other stuff. And, and it's a very possible scenario that this could just be another Hegelian dialectic and that the you know, the Anglo-American leader is simply just going to, you know, run over there. It all comes down to is out of need. Uh, Robert Trifflin uh, came up with Trifflin's dilemma st- stating that a reserve currency has this problem where it has to keep on creating all this debt. But at some point, the debt becomes unsustainable. And the only way to deal with it is to uh, cordon off that debt. Uh, the, of the dollar and let it, uh, you know, you put it in very nice terms like fall away or whatever, but basically default on the debt or collapse it, um, and try to coordinate it off. And that's exactly what's happening with this Asian infrastructure, uh, bank where the world is setting up a whole nother system excluding the United States. Um, and it could just be that the Anglo American on, and the, uh, and the United States, uh, purposely kept us out because they want to destroy the dollar and rip the dollar apart. And when I asked a senior member of the Obama administration last week, how are we going to grow exports if we won't allow nominal wage deflation? And he says, we're just going to kill the dollar. And I said, okay, more you mean. So that they could be the carpetbaggers that come in like the northerners did to the south uh, and buy up all the assets, much like how the Rothschilds went into Russia after uh, the Soviet Union collapsed and put up all these oligarchs of these young uh, 20-year-old kids, and all of a sudden they're billionaires within uh, two years. Uh, there's a very good possibility that this is a, a Hegelian dialectic. There's also the possibility that the SDR is, uh, you know, I've heard uh, Trump out there that uh, the SDR, which is basically a basket of these GA currencies excluding the yuan, uh, that that would be this uh, currency. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't understand why the Asian infrastructure uh, and bank uh, uh, came to existence, mainly because in 2008 or 2009, when China was actually, you know, knocking on the door saying, hey, let us in, we're a major player into the IMF. And the IMF is like, no, 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 we don't need you. Uh, so then I would contend with James Corbett and all these SDR people, um, all that may be true up until about 2008. And I think the 2008 financial crisis uh, showed to the world what United States did to the world by selling all these toxic assets all over the world to these pension funds, lying and then bailing out their own people, um, spending money on cars for cash. I mean, I remember the Saturday Night Live clip of the president of China and the president Obama uh, saying, oh, so you're saying that you're loaning money for people to, to so that we're buying your junkers and and, uh, you know, they're laughing at us and, and the world doesn't see us that way. And my contention is that, you know, the anti hegemon, that the BRICS are a legitimate uh, uh, counterforce there and that they're not to be trusted. This is not like we're cheering for China and cheering for Putin. They're just other collectivists in charge of another scheme. Uh, and it's another lesser of two evils. Um, but up until 2008, uh, things changed. And one of the points that I, p- I pointed out in the Silver Shield group is there was a book called Currency Wars written by Song Hong Bing way before Jim Rickards, our CIA uh, sound money guy, came into existence and wrote his book called Currency Wars. Song Hong Bing predicted the 2008 financial crisis, properly called that the Western governments are not uh, you know, political entities, but rather banker uh, uh, pawns. And he called out the Rothschilds. Uh, And that all these nations that are forming this BRICS nation have all suffered at the hands of the Anglo-American empire that's been run uh, by for centuries by the Rothschilds and Rockefellers and other uh, Anglo-American banking powers um, and suffered at the hands of it. The British colonization, the opium wars in China, uh, you know, even supporting uh, the, the Bolshevik Revolution. And I would contend that there's a real animosity and a real willingness to let America suffer for all the sins that have been committed in our names. And, um, and I, and, and in all three scenarios, whether the, the, the BRICS are a full blown Hegelian dialectic, uh, totally controlled by the Rockefellers and Rothschilds, uh, or that this hybrid SDR system, uh, that's run by the Anglo Americans, uh, you know, somehow limps into, uh, existence and, and, uh, is getting out of the dollar, uh, or, or my contention is that they're all evil and that, uh, you know, the whole system's going to go down one way or the other. And all three examples 
the only logical solution for any individual is to have real tangible wealth because that's what these guys are all playing for behind the scenes. We're seeing the, the massive amount of gold uh, that the Chinese are buying, that the Russians are buying, that the Indians are buying, the three major partners in this anti-hegemon alliance. Uh, we're seeing J.P. Morgan continue to stack physical silver uh, as the price of silver has been uh, going down or, you know, on, on and on. And, you know, at the end of the day, all these fiat currencies throughout all of history, regardless of who's in power or what schemes these elitists come up with, they all fail. And at some point, you know, the new currency comes in and it's always based off of something real. And it's going to be gold. It's going to be silver. My contention is silver uh, simply because of the, the gold to silver ratio. The RMB situation, you mentioned a, a so-called currency problem. I mean, do you see the day in the next five years where it's fully convertible and flexible? Well, you're talking to a person who's quite old. Uh, if I'm around in five years, I'd like to think that that is the case. Uh, I think we've all got to move towards that opportunity, and I think the challenge also is whether we should move towards an international currency because uh, the speculation and the complexity of currency has caused some of the irritation, uh, not only among the trading nations, but among individuals. Um, but it's not for me to say how it will happen, but I think uh, everyone who knows how to deal with these situations is very cognizant of the problem it takes to go over it, get over it, and um, I think the RMB will become more convertible. But when it will come that is a matter for obviously the powers that be. This would be the time because you really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, 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 world order, financial world order. Uh, they are kind of reluctant members of the IMF. They play along, but they don't make much of a contribution because it's not their uh, uh, not their institution, their share is, is not commensurate, their voting rights are not commensurate to their weight. So I think you need a, a new world order that China has to be part of the process of creating it. But they really are issues of the construction of a new world order. That's what this is about. And that's the sort of dialogue the Chinese are generally good at. And as and so a partnership between us is essential. A conflict between us is going to exhaust us both in tactical exercises that cannot be conclusive. And the New World Order could satisfy both? It has to satisfy both, because otherwise it will lead to tensions that will exhaust us both. The Silver Shield Exchange is a free weekly podcast, but the only way to hear it is through email. Sign up today at silvershieldexchange.com.